ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده قد قال تبارك وتعالى في كلامه المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه واله وسلم من صلى علي صلاه واحده صلى الله عليه بها عشرا كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العزيز الحكيم رب زدني علما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Dear respected listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are nearing the end of our series on the life of Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha, the wife, the first wife of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I said the, the last bit that we're going to discuss is her, the end of her life and it's not just the incident of her passing but actually the period leading up to that um and it begins approximately 3 years prior to her passing from this world 3 years before the migration of the muslims from makkah to mukarrama the complete migration with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to medina to munawwara and i mentioned that there was an earlier migration by the muslims from makkah to abyssinia and when the quraysh they saw that many of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam many of his kin who had accepted islam they were being granted refuge by the king najashi and he was allowing them to practice their religion freely without any repercussions the next step in the quraysh's dismissal of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that they decided that they would remove the main obstacle in their way which was the holy messenger sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and so the quraysh the and the other tribes got together and they decided amongst themselves or they pr- made a proposal the major tribes that to the main tribe that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam belonged to which was banu hashim that خذوا منا دية مضاعفة وليقتله رجل من غير قريش that this person has caused us immense trouble and he has one of the things they used to say is he has separated kith from kin he has separated father from son musab ibn umair and his relationship with his family including his mother that broke down and many other examples so they said we've tried everything we've tried to give him from the worldly possessions yet he has denied that so the only thing that's left for us to do is actually remove him as an obstacle na'udhu billahi min dhalik and so they said to the the quraysh and the other tribes some of them got together and said to banu hashim from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's immediate ancestral line that he comes from that khudhu minna diyatan mudha'afatan that take from us uh, blood money excessive blood money we're happy 
and the person that will kill the messengers of Allah وسلم, will not even be from the Quraysh will be from somewhere else so it's not something that we're tasking the immediate family of the Prophet وسلم, with or his uh, or the Quraysh itself but someone else will take care of this but we can no longer deal with the messengers of Allah وسلم, and the problems that he brings so خُذُوا مِنَّا دِيَةً مُضَعَفَةً that take from us an excessive amount in terms of the blood money which was the habit that if a murder was to take place then in the days of Jahiliyyah either tribal warfare would begin or blood money would be exchanged so Banu Hashim rejected this call and Banu Abdul Muttalib Ibn Abd Munaf who were also related to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they rejected this uh, proposal as well so the Quraysh when they saw that they had no means to get into the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi because of the stance of Banu Hashim and Banu Abdul Muttalib the next step they took was to socially boycott the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and anyone that was with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this boycott was it, 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 the, the background of the boycott is that the Prophet Wasallam and any of his followers Muslim or not so you had the likes of Abdul Muttalib who had not accepted Islam the uncle of the Prophet Wasallam. but despite this being the case he was also boycotted um, Abu Talib sorry um, and so the nature of this boycott was that there was as little interaction with Muhammad وسلم, and any of his followers and any of his supporters. So that meant that they stopped performing nikah with anyone that was supportive of the Messenger. وسلم. They stopped selling and buying with them. Abdullah ibn Abbas he said uh, he was one of the children that were born in the period of this boycott. And the Messenger وسلم, and his followers and his supporters, they actually had to leave the main area where they were residing amongst the Quraysh and have, had to go to Shabi Abi Talib, one of the valleys that belonged to Abu Talib. And they were living separately. So not only was it a social boycott in terms of interaction, that no nikah, no buying and selling, but also they were made to they, they, they felt compelled to live separately. And so Abdullah ibn Abbas said that in that period of three years where we were living separately, an individual would go out in the morning to do trade, to do business. Experienced trademen and trade people who had done this for their entire life were going out, but because of their relationship with the Messenger وسلم, they were boycotted in the markets. And people, Abdullah ibn Abbas would say that they would leave in the morning to do trade and come back in the evening with nothing. And because of this, فَقَدْ هَلَكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ There were individuals that passed away and perished because of this boycott. For three consecutive years, this was the situation. And Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, subhanallah, she spent every moment with the Messenger sallallahu And despite her wealth, she used whatever she could to try and bring some comfort to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and to the believers and to those who were supporting the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so in this difficult, difficult period, and this was the, the beginning of a sequence of difficulties that the Prophet ﷺ had to endure. So three years of immense difficulty, and upon the end of it, um, there is an entire story, but we're not going to go into the, the, the actual boycott and, and, and the lessons from there. But three years later, upon the ending of the boycott, those difficult period, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was compelled, pushed to one corner, and at the end of this three year period, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's support network, those who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gained and garnished a lot of support from, 
the likes of Abu Talib, the likes of Khadija al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha, they pass away. And in the books of tarikh and history, there are a few opinions, but one opinion is that in the span of three days, three days, the Prophet sallallahu loses his uncle, Abu Talib, and in three, day, three days, he's still not overcome the grief of losing his uncle, who has been the support network for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and he loses his wife Khadija al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And that's why um, the actual year that this takes place is known as the year of sorrow. Amul Hijra. Amul Huzn, sorry. The year of sorrow. So the Prophet has consecutive difficulties and anxieties that he has to face. The difficulty of the period in the Valley of Abu Talib, immediately upon leaving that within the span of a few uh, weeks, a few months, depending on the, 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 the account that we take, he loses his uncle Abu Talib, and within the span of three days, he loses his wife Khadija al Kubra. And so the incident itself is. Um, is a sequence of grief that the Prophet ﷺ has to endure upon the loss of his wife um, Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And the loss of Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha is, is tremendously difficult for the Prophet ﷺ. When his uncle passes away, the historians, they write that there are two things um, that affected the Prophet ﷺ. One, obviously, is the uh, the relationship, the paternal relationship in terms of his uncle um, passing away and the second is that despite the continuous effort of the Messenger وسلم, constantly pushing right up until the final moment Abu Talib does not accept Islam and he leaves this world without having accepted in fact the two verses of um the Holy Quran, one of them being in the Tahdi Man Ahbabit, Walakin Allah Yahdi May Yasha, refers to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam. Also, Makana Lin Nabi Waladina Amanu Ayastah Firul Mushrikin, Walokanu Uli Kurba Min Badima Tabiyan Alhum and Nahum Ashaw Al Jahim, that when Abu Talib was passing away, um, the Prophet Sallallahu was encouraging him to say La ilaha illallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that there was such a relationship with his uncle that he said to him that I will continue to seek forgiveness on your behalf until Allah tells me that I'm not allowed. When Allah makes that decree, then I will stop. And that's why the verses were revealed, preventing the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from uh, seeking any more repentance on behalf of his uncle because he had passed away without uh, have, having accepted um, Islam. So this was a tremendous grief. His own uncle, support network, and the fact that he left this dunya without having accepted the message of the Messenger Wasallam. And within a three-day period, uh, some Mufassirun, they write, uh, uh, the Mu'arrikhun, sorry, the historians, they write that either on the 20th or the 17th or around that period of Ramadan, um, Sayyiduna Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she leaves um, this world. And the Prophet Wasallam. نَزَلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ فِي قَبْرِهَا The Prophet ﷺ descended himself into the grave of Khadija رضي الله تعالى عنها and وَلَمْ تَكُنِ الصَّلَاةُ وَلَا الْجَنَازَةِ شُرِعَةِ At that point the prayer of uh, Janazah had not been established in the deen uh, as of yet. And so the passing of Khadija رضي الله تعالى عنها was a moment of tremendous grief for the Messenger ﷺ. She passed away in a place called Hajun and is buried in Jannatul Mu'alla um, in Makkatul Mukarramah, the burial site um, which isn't too far away from the Haram um, of Makkah. Um, and 
though the doors, the gates aren't open, you're allowed to see the graveyard itself. And most people who take you on ziyarat will pass by Jannatul Mu'alla. Unfortunately, they don't stop a lot of the times. But if one is able to, then do go. Um, inshallah, pay your respects to Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. Um, do ithar al-thawab um, and thank her um, on behalf of the ummah for if we are to summarize Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, in summary, was the first person to accept the call of the Messenger Wasallam. She was the immense rock and support network of the Messenger Wasallam. She assisted the Messenger Wasallam and the Deen with her wealth in a period where they had no one else to turn to in terms of wealth. They were cut off from the rest of society. She was so blessed in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam conveys his salam from Allah to her. And in this very world, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives her the glad tidings. Um, after she passes away, the Prophet sallallahu says that she is in her place in Jannah, in a house in Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tremendously blessed Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She is a very noble uh, Sahabiya, she is a very noble companion of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As I mentioned, the closest to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For during her period of marriage with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not marry anybody else. All of his children, from in terms of wives, are from Khadija radiAllahu Taala Anha. So she holds very unique places in the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would re- would remember her afterwards he, he was overcome with emotion and such was the uh, support of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala on the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam that on many occasions the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would remember the friends of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala and honor them because of the honor that he had for Khadija radiallahu ta'ala so that is somewhat a brief look at the life and the lessons of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala and Allah grant us the tawfiq to learn from them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to then implement whatever lessons we can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thank our mother give her the best of rewards in uh, the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, allow us to follow in her footsteps in terms of her dedication and her commitment to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah grant us all the tawfiq wa akhiru da'wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahu wa bihamdik wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiru khunutubu ilayk jazakumullahu khayran assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh